Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Vancouver Canucks just lost another one. And I talked about this in the video for the Montreal Canadiens game. The Vancouver Canucks finally got through a game where they didn't let up five or six goals. Well, tonight they let up six goals, which really goes against everything that I was preaching in the last few videos, but hey, it was against the Jets, and we got ourselves three goals that were absolutely magnificent. But, before we get into that, I actually wanted to talk about the game. I know, I never really talk about the game itself, I talk a little bit about it, I try to go over the goals that the Canucks scored, because that's all I really care about, but... This one was a little bit frustrating to watch at times. First off, because of the amount of shots that the Jets were able to take against the Canucks. Now, in the first period, the Winnipeg Jets got themselves 23 shots. And I believe the Vancouver Canucks got like 7? Something like that. It was tiny compared to the amount of shots that they gave up. And this continued into the second period, and it continued into the third period as well. The final shot counter of the entire game was 49 shots for Winnipeg and 25 for Vancouver. So, doubled the shots, basically. And the thing is, this game was kind of frustrating to watch because you could totally see the difference in mentality between the two teams. Winnipeg was a team where they would possess the puck the way that they wanted to do so, and anytime they had a chance, they either made a really good solid pass over to their other players, or they took a solid shot on net. Even if the shot wasn't really all that clean or crisp, they still got it on net. The Vancouver Canucks did a lot of waiting, a lot of passing, and a lot of giving away opportunities in my opinion. There were a lot of moments by guys like Goddett and Goldolbin and Tanev where they were in prime positions to shoot, but they waited a little bit too long and they made the wrong play a little bit too late. This resulted in rushes going the other way, worst case scenario, even some goals against. And I think a lot of the Vancouver Canucks mentality in this one relied a lot upon the concept of teamwork, which is not a bad thing, but the Winnipeg Jets did such a good job of showing why that was ineffective, and they did such a good job at showing what an all-out, let's just say gunslinger kind of game plan looks like in a successful light, because that's exactly what they did. Now. I totally get it. The Jets are way more talented than the Canucks. They have better players, and overall, the quantity of players that are really good, it just supersedes the quantity of players that are good in the Canucks. That's kind of a fair argument to make. And thus, the offensive production and the offensive chances by the Jets, it's probably going to be more than Vancouver. Okay, I get it. I get it. But at the same time, this wasn't necessarily a game that I thought the Vancouver Canucks played well in. Now, towards the end of the game, they actually did get themselves a lot of zone time, energy, and shots. And that was when I was like, okay, they're actually in this. I like it. I like the product that we're seeing on the ice here. But ultimately, a 6-3 to three loss is what we come away with. Five goals against on Jacob Markstrom. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, but he saved 43 shots. He had 48 shots against, and he saved 43 of them. That's an 896 save percentage. It's not necessarily great, but a lot of the chances that he did save were really good. A lot of the shots that he had against were really bad. And overall, I know Jacob Markstrom's in a position where a lot of those goals were goals that he really would want to take back. And on the other end, Connor Hellebuck got himself a really good performance in this one. A lot of really good saves, and his save percentage in this game is actually 880, which was lower than Jacob Markstrom's. But at the same time, there were a lot of opportunities that Hellebuck stopped that I was like, wow, that really should have been a goal, but what fantastic goaltending. And, you know, there's the whole factor too that the Vancouver Canucks only took half the amount of shots on the Winnipeg goaltender than the Jets took on Vancouver's goaltender, so there's that inequality as well. But let's actually start talking about the goals and talk about my energy, because this video is titled Take My Energy, Elias Pettersson, Nikolai Goldolbin, and Tyler Mott, because oh my goodness did these guys absolutely rob me of my ability to breathe as a human being. 
Elias Pettersson's first goal of the game was an exact replica of his goal against Carey Price on Saturday night. Hutton is on the point. He has the puck, and he passes it over to Pettersson, flat on the ice. Pettersson with a one-timer, far side, up high, boom. 100% accuracy on that shot, 100% power, and it's in the net, his 12th of the year. Hutton gets an assist, Goldolbin gets his 10th assist of the year. That's crazy! Goldolbin with a through the legs, behind the back pass, over to Hutton over there on the point, who sent it over to Pedersen. Nikolai Goldolbin is in such a good position right now that I can't even begin to describe how happy I am with the production that he's been getting. Now, let's take a look at Goldolbin's stats from before. Before this season, Nikolai Goldolbin had a total of seven assists in his NHL career. He got himself his 10th assist in this game. He's totally on top of things right now. 23 years old and a lot of time to come out here and kick some butt for the Vancouver Canucks because he's finding his place on his team and he's doing things well. Goldolbin is up to 12 points with this assist. Then, the Winnipeg Jets come back. They score two more. It's Shifley and Kyle Connor. Kyle Connor's goal was absolutely brutal. Oh my goodness. I don't usually talk about the other team's goals unless it's Montreal or Toronto, but oh my gosh, what a shot by Connor. Can't stop that if you're the goaltender. I'm sorry, but Line A gets things on the board in a second, and then Tyler Mott grabs all the energy of the building right back as a short-handed goal comes out of it. Bo Horvat with the shot block at the point on the Winnipeg power play. Tyler Mott takes the puck. He goes forward. He's on a breakaway. He shoots. He scores, and he falls into the corner of the ice. And that had me dying. I was laughing really hard. That was hilarious. But he got us back on the board, and everybody was hype right back again because Tyler Mott, ladies and gentlemen, with his second in the year, shorthanded goal, showing everybody why he made the team over Sam Gagne. Bo Horvat got himself his ninth assist on this one. Then, just like five minutes later or something like that, Nikolai Goldolbin with an unassisted goal. Winnipeg's trying to clear it. And Goldolbin is there, he stops it, he has the puck, he skates forward a little bit, he does a backhand forehand, and I was like, okay, when is he going to pass it? And then, he skates forward even more with another backhand forehand, and he does another backhand forehand, then he pulls it over across the crease and he scores, shoves it in on the open side. Oh my gosh, that was some silky mitts dangling goal right there. We haven't seen talent like that, or at least stick handling like that in a Canucks uniform since like Henrik Sedin. And I know Elias Pettersson is capable of doing that. He's done that amongst a few players before, but he hasn't deked out a goalie yet. Pettersson hasn't been in the position where he totally knocked the socks off of a goalie just yet. I know he has the talent to do that, but he hasn't done it yet. Goldolbin just did that. And boy, oh boy, was this one beautiful. Then Patrick Laine gets himself two more goals. That's it. 6-3 is the final score. Vancouver Canucks drop another 6-goal game. We've lost 6 in a row, and we're still in a playoff spot. That's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. But the Vancouver Canucks take this one with another tank win. Elias Pettersson with the goal. The Vancouver Canucks with the regulation loss. See it however you want, but this one had me ballin' because I was just so invested. I really think that the Canucks should have lost the game, which they did, but I was very entertained either way, and I like that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Blush of the Gaming, and bye.